Welcome back YouTube. Today we have Mr. Alex Chalino behind the camera. Fun fact, we actually went to school together and now working together. How cool is that? Before I get going, I want to cover my intro workout. 25 grams of MPS Max watermelon. It's insane. I'm going to put it in the fridge, even better cold. And at the moment, I'm only doing 25 grams of sustain as I'm still a few weeks post show, so my calories are not that high. Uh, generally, I start driving this up. Once I start getting above around six to seven grams of carbs again i've got a good appetite that's just you know keeping that clean but anyway that i'll touch on that another time once i start getting above 600 700 grams of carbs that is when i start driving this up heavily and i will push this to around 120 grams at my peak um potentially even 150. Um, generally when we intro workout we intro, intro workout carbs i start sipping as i start training or even just before and i always aim to finish it right for about three quarters through my session um, that way, I'm always ready for a post-workout meal, regardless of how big this actually is. Uh, so I'm giving kind of a little bit of time and a bit of window there, just drinking water after I've actually had this. And again, another tip, guys, if you are using an intra-workout, make sure you actually add adequate water intake to your intra, otherwise it may actually cause some digestive issues. So, my further ado, let's go. Business with glasses coming off and uh, phone gets put away. We should have to check on Meg, as Meg's still uh, not well. I still can't get over how good this actually tastes. Pina colada, sustain is incredible. Now, logbook, the most useful tool to track progression if you are keeping your repetition standardized. Now, this can be your biggest friend or your biggest enemy, depending on how you use it. So you have to be wary of making sure that the only reps that you log in here are the reps that have been standardized with your execution and tempo. If your execution and tempo is worse and you are getting extra reps, you are aggressing, you're not progressing. The whole point of using progressive overload is to make sure that your execution and tempo is standardized. That is the priority when utilizing a logbook. This is why people do not understand the application of this because they are unable to actually standardize their reps and sets across the training block. Therefore, they abuse this and progress in a silly fashion that is not progressive overload. Now, write that down, use the logbook, standardize your reps and get massive. As always, we're gonna begin with mobility work. If you wanna see detailed mobility work, what I do before leg days, watch the first video, which was a hamstring dominant leg day. So today, we're actually gonna do same mobility, start with the second leg day. Now, you will have already seen the structure and the setup of both sessions, and I will actually go through every single session for you all and film every single session in detail so you can see and use it for yourself if you want to as well. Always giving back. Yeah, boy. So an adductor, I do tend to work in high rep ranges, so my prehab work that I do pretty much prepares me for this because I go quite deep with split squats, so it does prepare my adductor for the work ahead of us. So generally with jumping adductor, I'll only take two, two really warm up sets because that's all I need. Um, especially my first working set, you know, it is going to be high rep rep set. So, on adductor, I tend to not go below 12 repetitions generally, and I work between rep ranges of 12 to 20 reps. Um, that's definitely something that I've found really works best with adductor, and again, load exposure is less that way, less likely of getting injured, as it is quite a sensitive area um, that can just twinge very easily if you go too heavy, even when your accuracy is, you know, perfect. So. What you'll notice here, guys, is 
I am pausing actively before the stoppers actually touch. Think about when the stoppers touch together, there's no tension. It's losing the actual, you're losing a portion of the repetition by allowing the stoppers to touch in the middle. So, as a reference point, micro pause across both contractile ranges. I'll take 50 on first set, yeah? Yeah, Alex. Could you give a hand, please, brother? Some of you have probably seen Alex on my Instagram with the back transformation um, since we started working together. Basically, we've got him from looking like a boy to looking like a man now. Uh, we'll get the transformation up on here so you can see, guys. It's his behind, so you can see the face behind the behind. Two, one. Up, 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 up. Thank you. Oh yeah. Here we go. that requires no introduction. Mr. J from Adenor. This is my this is my massage therapist. He has been for years. Anyone who has been watching content, you will have seen him somewhere down the line. Um, rubbing me down and looking after me, making sure that I'm staying injury free. So we'll give it a little quick tour. Now J from Adenor is actually going to be at Ultraflex Rotherham. So any member, anyone close to the area, close to Rotherham or anyone visiting can actually message Jay and book in and get your shit sorted to get looked after. So we'll give you a little tour down and a little preview of what's to come. So we should be open operating anytime now. So when you see this video, you can message Jay on Instagram, however you want, pester him as much as you can, ask him all the questions, message him, get booked in, get help. He's been looking after me, keeping me injury free for a long time now. So touch wood, you know, staying injury free and staying that way as well. So happy days. Yeah, so we got uh, for the first of November we're actually opening. Um, so we're going to be based in the room just over Cooper's shoulder there. Um, we've got TV, Sega, Mega Drive, all, all the business. Um, so if you're early for an appointment, you're welcome to come and sit down. Um, but there's going to be, I'm going to be based there sometimes, but the main guy that's going to be there is called Louis. Um, and you'll find him, he trains at Ultraflex Rotherham as well. He's a good lad. actually one of Cooper's clients. Yeah. Um, and he's really interested in getting people out. Um, he's very meticulous in what he does, and I have complete faith in what he's, what he's able to do. He's in there decorating now, so you might catch a glimpse of him at some point. So this is the room, um, we're actually decorating. This is Louis, as I was mentioning before. Yeah, guys. Louis is actually going to be based um, here full time, working with you guys. You can book directly into Louis' diary. Um, but yeah, this is the TV and the tools. Um, and we're going to have some sofas and stuff in here just to chill out. And then this is the room itself. So we've got a big space. At the minute, it's just sports massage that we're offering, both male and female here. Um, but we will be adapting as um, as Louis gets busier and busier, adding things like shockwave and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, make sure you check us out. Book us in R and R Body Therapy Line hamstring curl. We are specifically starting with the prime line ham curl in setting four, or set number one. So this is our only opportunity to get the hamstring challenged in fully shortened range. Now, if you were to do that later in the session, you just wouldn't have the energy to do so. So this is the only and ideal time to actually challenge the hamstring in the shortened range. Now, if you don't have an option like this, majority of standing hamstring curls actually have that resistance profile. So my second option, if I did not have the prime line leg curl, would be a standing hamstring curl, which we do have here. Now, that is another option for me in other sessions sometimes as alternate movements. So generally, 
when you are training legs, I would always, always advise to start your movements with something that will overload the hamstring at short and range, generally, and then you will finish off with something that overloads them in length and range, which is a stretch, such as a seated leg curl. So, exercise sequence is extremely important. You have to challenge muscles across all their ranges to get the most out of them. So, reason why we pause in the shortened range, again, this is set to challenge shortened range even more. So, adding additional pause in the shortened range increases volume indirectly to the set and increases stimulus as well. So, strict of that pause. Last rep on it, maybe a partial. Yep. So, second set was setting five, which overloads mid to length and range. And now, we're gonna set in setting three, which overloads length and range. So, this way, we really, really are gonna smoke our hamstrings totally and completely, because slowly we change the resistance profile to favor where the hamstring is actually the strongest, which is length and range. So, by the time we get to the third set on setting three, which predominantly overloads length and range, as you lift, the tension actually drops off, so it's almost like getting assisted reps. So I tend to stick with the same load across the three sets. And again, try and aim to actually hit the same reps. And that way, it's actually progressive every single set. This is a, a nasty, nasty set. I said, the way this drops off is unbelievable. Uh, if you have power machines, they're worth the weight in gold. Hence why we've got a lot of them. We're the only gym in the country that actually has pretty much the full full range and we actually have more coming so always giving back number one Now, something I've covered before, but I'll cover it again. When you are sitting in leg extension, again, neutral spine, pull your hips down in to create counter force, and then make sure that alignment is proper. So, what I mean by that is, imagine you're drawing a straight line from your hip down to your knee, down to your foot. That way, the line of force remains that little straight across your joints. We don't want to allow the knees to come out, as again, that is when I start seeing the kneecap start getting pulled that way and create all sorts of knee issues. So, when you get in position, if you start everything up properly, before you even begin the reps, there should all be tension in your quads, not the joints or connective tissue around it. This is our chance, the only chance this session, to overload our quad in the shortened range. So naturally, that is where we're gonna put the set in. So now, this is set on setting four, which overloads mid to shortened range. Which means that, again, we will actually train the portion of the rep where the quad is fully flexed, fully shortened. 
Now, you cannot do that on a leg press. You cannot do that on a hack squat. This is the only chance, the only opportunity to actually do this across all movements. To a degree, you can mimic this by banding a leg press, but it's still not the same. Uh, still not quite the same as actually fully extending the knee and fully shortening your quad. So when you are looking to maximize your quad training, again, same principle applies. Train your muscles across its full contractile ranges. So shortened and lengthened, and obviously mid, but that will come as byproduct of all the other movements. The most abused and misused machines in the gym. I see girls doing the same way as me with no quad development. Momentum kills gains, guys. It's not about what you lift, it's how you do it. Now the reason why I do leg extension before my compound work, I am three weeks post show. So I'm also using a, what I would call a regression pattern where I am specifically pre-exhausting myself before going to compound work to simply limit and reduce lower exposure whilst I am still in my recovery phase. So when I hit week six, that is when leg extension will actually move to go last. And that is when I actually start prioritizing my compound work. And that goes across all my training sessions. Uh, I do have some sort of exhaustion before my pressing. Um, what you'll notice guys, as I progress the setup, they will actually shift towards back end of the sessions. And I will prioritize compound work once it's safer to do so. And I'm a little bit heavier and my skill acquisition is much higher across these compound lifts. Now, one way to bulletproof your knees is challenging your muscles in full length of range during the stretch. Now, if you're not exposing yourself to the end ranges, particular stretch in a hand squat, for example, in full knee flexion, you're not gonna bulletproof your knees. So, if you are having knee issues, First and foremost, drop the load. Secondly, go as deep as your face safely can and aim to get full knee flexion, which means your knee travels forward across your toes without it actually traveling back. That is full knee flexion. Now, I'll show you how to do this in a moment. But again, if you're struggling with knee issues, drop the load. And secondly, full range of motion with a pause. One way to put it for your knees is actually take it there. Now let's show you how to do it. What you notice guys, my top working set looks exactly the same as my warm sets. Full range of motions, full control, and making sure I stay composed all the way throughout the set. Calm aggression is key. Whilst prioritizing execution, range of motion, tempo, and making sure that you still take it there with all out intensity and leave nothing in the tank. This is what I like to call calm before the storm. You cannot go into a set with any degree of intensity without focus. Personally for me, focus and aggression go hand in hand. You cannot just be one without the other. Both have to work together in order to get the most out of a set. So you have to learn how to actually channel both. Stay fully focused whilst giving your absolute all out aggression into that set. Again, if your goal is to take your set all the way, you need the focus and you need the aggression. Go for 100%, no less. I'm gonna to touch this now, and then I might touch three and a five, 
or I might touch this now. Feels good. I'm going to put a five on and work. Two. Yo. Alex, put this tune up and work in set. Skip it back and play it in five minutes, yeah? Posture, breathing, racing. Then we get after it. Perfect fucking set. Perfect fucking set. No numbers. Perfect fucking set. why we only do a single set on this. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best trainer in the world, but I train semi-accurately and I pour my fucking soul into these sets. When you can train with a decent amount of accuracy and you give your everything into a set, trust me, the amount of volume you actually need to create an to response is very, very low because volume is not just the number of sets. Volume is your intensity, your execution, your tempo, and your repetitions. Very overlooked variable. Here we go. Now, active range of motion is literally how far you can take it and stay safe without your lower back rounding. So, again, do not sacrifice range of motion for the sake of fucking loading shit you cannot handle yep that's how we do ladies and gents now next set is going to be one next set is going to be the working set where i'm going to take it to death what we'll notice is the rep pace, depth, everything remains to the highest standard I can physically do. And again, the standard always improves and gets better. Session to session, rep by rep, set by set. That's how we do. We don't just chase load, we chase perfection and then load. Get this in, in! And drive. More. One more rep. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Pause. Drive. Uh. That's you, that's you. Right. 
put templates on, let me show you how it's done. When these come off, it's safety off. It's game time. I know that you can all, don't zoom in on my feet, all the weirdos will be loving it. RPE, childbirth. For all you that use the RP scale. If it's any less than childbirth, you're just gonna stay small. So Eurocentric is the most important portion of the rep. That is where you build the most muscle tissue. So that is the portion of the rep where you don't just think about being slow. Don't even just think about being controlled, although you have to be controlled. Think about resisting the weight down. Pause to remove the momentum and then you fucking drive up. Do not miss out on the most important portion of the rep that actually builds the most muscle tissue. That is the eccentrics. Watch Dorian Yates, the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Watch the way he performed every single eccentric. Super controlled and pause with vicious aggression. Pause and then he drove it up. That is what you've got to do if you want to make the most out of each rep. Prioritize the portion of the rep that builds the most muscle. That is the eccentric. Resist the weight, don't drop. Don't just lower it, don't just be slow. Fight that motherfucker and then drive up. Right. Contractual load split squat. If you are to use contractual loading, do not hold on to anything with this hand. It completely defeats the objective. Secondly, do not allow the dumbbell to touch your leg. Again, defeats the object. The whole point is to have the dumbbell float in front of you. And that is what's truly going to challenge extra stability to force your glute med to actually do more work. So, Get your position, posture, brace, pelvis tucked, body weight cued, and lean into the working leg. Let the dumbbell flow out in front of you, and then descend, pause in the hole, then drive back up. When you are training, you naturally always treat your sets as a separate set. You wouldn't do two sets of leg press one after another. The same principle applies when you are working unilaterally, unless it's like, Side lateral, then it's a bit different. But if you're doing any any bigger movement and you're working unilaterally, treat it as a separate set in order to get the same performance out the other side. Safe to screw back on now. Sit. Key now. I'm safe now. Sit now. Here. Uh, yeah. Sport mode. That was basically like extra sport. 
now we're back in uh, just cruising. This session is a soul destroyer. Definitely by far my favourite session. One of. To be honest, they're all my favourite sessions. Big up Jordan Peters. Some of you know from my previous clip. I am currently kind of coaching myself, but every decision I make, everything I do, all my check-ins, I share with the wife. She's the most important person in my life. And the second most important person in my life is Jordan Peters. So I also share with him as well. So this is by far the happiest I've been and the most I've progressed in such a short space of time. I am four weeks post show this weekend and this is by far the best position I've ever been in in my life. So I wake up every single day and I'm excited to start my day because everything I do is fueled by what I do in the gym. If my bodybuilding is going good, if I manage to progress, if my training is going great, it fuels me so much to succeed in everything else I do. So I appreciate there's so many coaches out there, so many businessmen out there that say, coaching first, this first. Okay, fair enough. For me to be the best version I am, I need to have my training going well. That is my time. I have to be selfish for that time in order to be truly selfless to help others to the best of my ability. That's key for me. When I'm happy, I am 10 times more productive. I'm 10 times more creative. I'm so much more switched on for my clients and other work and my businesses. So, word of advice, guys. You want to be good at coaching? You want to be good at anything you do? You need to stay happy and sometimes you need to prioritise yourself. Food for thought. Last exercise guys. Now every single leg session of mine, as you'll have seen already on the session breakdown, I have a lap movement in place. Now, on my hamstring session, which you already have watched previously, if you haven't, give it a watch. I do a specific lap movement. It's a single arm cast pull down, which targets the lower lap. Now, this machine in particular, it's my favorite upper back pull down. This targets my upper back, rear delt, and a little bit of trap. Now, for me, I need to grow everywhere. But arguably, my back still needs to come up. So, a portion of my training volume is specifically distributed towards prioritizing my back. Therefore, at the end of every leg workout, I have a little bit of back work in place. Now, my recovery actually allows for this. Therefore, I'm actually able to do that. So, to finish off on, we have my upper back bias pull down. Now, if you haven't already watched, my lat versus upper back breakdown and tutorial when I, break, when I actually take my, one of my clients through and show it her, please watch that back as that is the actual session that has dropped just before this. So give that a watch guys and that will give you some great cues and a breakdown of how to actually execute your upper back movements and your lat movements. Now here, a quick overview. Pelvis tucked with core contracted. So as I get in, I actually exhale to tuck my rib cage in and engage my core with pelvis tucked. Once I get in that position, I inhale and slightly lift my sternum up to actually favour my upper back musculature doing the work. So, pay attention now and watch. Watch it in action. This is going to be my last warm-up set and then we're going to work. So, 
First and foremost, position. Position, bracing, breathing, alignment. And then once I'm actually in the set, I make sure I actually specifically pause in the stretch here for one to two seconds as this machine is actually set to overload length and range, which is a stretch when I'm the strongest. And then it drops off as I get in the shortened position. However, once I get in the shortened position, I still take a micro pause in that range. Momentum kills gains, guys. Every exercise I do, I will always, always pause. Whether it's a longer pause to actually increase volume directly, or to shorter pause, I will always pause across all contractile ranges to take out momentum and get the most out of each rep. Right, my people, that is a session wrap up. So I appreciate you all tuning in. As always, like, share, subscribe if you enjoy the content and much more to come. We are gonna break it down session by session for you all. Uh, all my sessions and make sessions as well. So there's gonna be a lot of content coming your way. For now guys, thanks for tuning in. Take care, I'll see you all again soon.